Welcome to Financial Statements Introduction. After you've done all the hard work of analyzing your transactions, we get to now create financial statements so that we can actually analyze, interpret the financial performance and the condition of the company. How is the company doing? Um, is it doing great? If, if it's not, where can we improve? If the business is doing bad, what can we get rid of? All that good stuff. Um, so before we can actually analyze it, we need statements. So we're going to take our transactions, produce our financial statements from those transactions that we just got done doing so we can actually analyze it. You are going to create four financial statements for me. And I hope you are taking notes. Write these down. They must be done in this order. The income statement, the statement of changes in owner's equity, the balance sheet, and then the statement of cash flow. So the first one that we're going to look at and take down some notes is the income statement. It's your revenues minus your expenses to get you your net income. So you take up all your revenue minus all your total expenses and you get hopefully net income and not a loss. From here, and this is why you have to do them in this order, is whatever number you got here on your income statement must be used on the statement of changes in owner's equity. So you begin with your beginning capital before you did all of your transactions and take your net income from the income statement, add your investments, and subtract your withdrawals your, your purse for personal use to get your ending capital. So how did we go from 20,000 to 29? Was it all net income? Was it all investments? Or maybe like how much is the owner taking out of the business? Maybe the owner's taking too much out. So it's important to analyze that change in owner's equity, which were those four accounts. Revenue minus expenses. You don't see revenue, you don't see expenses, but revenue minus expenses. You would either have net income or net loss. You wouldn't have both of these, just one. But I put them on so that you don't forget one or the other. You may not have taken any money out of, out of the business and this would be zero. You may not have invested anything. That may be zero. So how did you, whatever you started with, to how did you finish? Now you have to do this one second because third, you take this number and that goes on your balance sheet. Your balance sheet is your total assets minus your, or total assets equals your liabilities plus your owner's equity. Okay, so assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And whatever you got here, this ending capital has to go here. Okay, from there, we're going to do the statement of cash flow. And this number will show up somewhere on your cash flow statement, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, this is probably one of the hardest ones. Um, to do the statement of cash flow is only cash transactions. So anything that was on account, if it didn't affect the, the cash account, it's not on there. So it's analyzing just your cash account. But we have to figure out what's happening to our cash. How are we getting it? How are we spending it? What's going on? So we do have to break it down into three categories, your operating activities, your investing activities, and your financing. And when I see investing, I'm thinking owner's equity and don't, 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 don't. So operating activities is really easy. It's cash revenue minus your expenses. So all your revenue minus your expenses, as long as it was cash, that goes in the operating section. Investing is when you invest in the comp the company invests in assets. So the company invested some of their cash to buy land. The company invested some of its cash to buy a building. The company invested cash to buy equipment. I'm going to take you back to Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Remember, liabilities, the creditors and the owners, they both have a financial claim. So the financing activities think financial claims. Who has financial claims? 
So did the owner invest money? That would be an owner's financial claim. It goes under financing. Did you borrow money? So if you put money in your cash and bank account from a bank loan, then the creditor, the bank has a financial claim. Did the owner take money out? That reduced the owner's financial claim. So this one's a tr tricky one. You're probably going to have to spend the most time on this one. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got this business called Chickadee Travel Service. And for the year ended April 30th. So it actually went from, let's see, May 1st, 20, um, if we do like this year, so it started May 1st, 2017, and is going to April 30th, 2018. Okay, so it started in May and it goes all the way around and the year ends in April 30th. You could say it started in May 2016 and it ends in April 30th, 2017. So it's a fiscal period. So we've got fees earned of 26200 That, don't forget, would be your revenue account. There's only one because all the rest are expenses. So you're going to prepare an income statement for the current year ended April 30th. Okay, so how do you do that? First, you need your heading. Who, what, when. Who, what, when. Okay, who, it's the chickadee travel service. What? It's an income statement. When? For the year ended April 30th. And it's very, 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 very important that you write for the year ended. It's not a snapshot. It's a range. It's a range. This is the revenue you got from May 31st all the way through April 30th. Who, what, when? You might want to write that down. Okay. Now we're going to do the revenue section, the expense section, and then the net income section. So you do need a revenue expense and a net income section. So revenue, there's one account, fees earned. And what I would do, because if you look at all of my accounts, they all line up. So what I would do is actually move that one over. Unfortunately, this is why I don't like Google Sheets. Um, they don't have an increase indent button. I've uh, tried to look for it. It looks like you have to go into some script editor and do some coding, and that's not what I want to do. So I guess i got to show you the way you should not do it, but it's going to have to work for us. Is just um, press the space bar in front of it like three times. We could, if we were in Excel, I would just... Um, highlight all of these and click the increase indent button and it would automatically increase them for me. So I have my revenue section, fees earned, it's indented, all accounts should be indented. And if you notice there's basically like three columns. The title of the account goes here in the headings. Um, this is like your this is like your grand total of that category column. So we're going to put all our grand total amounts over here. If you notice expenses, if we only had one expense, wages expense, we would put it over in this column. But since there's more than one expense, we're going to actually put the accounts in this column. This is like, let's subtotal these up column and then get the total of all of these and put it in this column. So I'm going to actually auto sum. What do I want to auto sum? These numbers right here and then I can go ahead and press enter. Now I have to calculate my net income. I take my equals, revenue, minus my total expenses and I get 55550 for my total net income.